All right, all right. Well, hopefully this is uh, this is the second and hopefully the last video on this McLean reel mower uh, that I've been. Uh, I guess it's restoring. I, I won't re recall. I won't call it restoring because I think my paint job just really sucks. I guess that's something I need to work on. I have a couple of other projects that that I really want to. I want them to come out nice, but uh, with this one, uh, in the in the last video, it showed disassembling and cleaning up and repainting all the individual parts, uh, or most. I mean, I, I fast forwarded through a lot of it. I uh, didn't know if you wanted to sit through all that, but in this video, I'm doing the 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 pre-assembly. I guess you'd call it. I've, I'm going to assemble everything except for the engine and then work on the engine get it running and then do the final assembly just plopping it on and then we'll give it a test run and after you test run it you know of course there's going to be a lot of adjustments that need to be done sharpening and honing the blades and uh, setting and adjusting the blades so you get a good clean cut well I guess that's it you know I'm gonna start this video out I'll show you uh, what I ran into when I was reassembling these uh, these piece parts in the main body of it didn't want to you know it's just the exact same thing as taking it apart just put it all back together and but I did run into a couple of snags and I'll show you what that is then we'll get started on the engine I think I need to take a look at this engine and see if it's a blown head gasket or do I need to get uh, uh, possible piston rings or a head gasket or whatever it needs so wow full of junk Just zero compression. Maybe just out of the carb. So, so I guess it could be three things. Could be a, a head gasket. Could be piston rings, or it could be the valves just stuck wide open. You know. Yeah, it looks like the valves are just uh, pretty much frozen. <laughs> you can see that. Let me get you up close. Let me turn them. Yeah, so looks like the intake, or which one's which here? You can see one moving. This one is just stuck completely open. And it looks like that's the intake and the exhaust. The cylinder looks okay. And I'll just have to go ahead and uh, get a new gasket for it. Alright, so I had, uh, I sprayed some penetrating oil in there try to free that up but it is just solid yeah just gently tapping it's not going to do it and I don't want to bend it up so Wow. 
All right, well, let's disassemble this. I'll take the uh, the tank and the carburetor off and, uh, and the muffler. And that should give us access to the to the valves down here, the valve springs. We can see what's going on under there. And from the looks of this carburetor, I think I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and take it all the way off and uh, and put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. So I can see how filthy it is down there. Gauging from the look of everything else on this on this engine, it's probably pretty gunked up in there. this there we go and this one will unplug from the uh, from the magneto the magneto's good I know we were getting spark so so there we go. I think I'm gonna, yeah. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, gas tank's not too bad. There is some stuff in there, but it's not all rusted out. You know, that's good. So we'll flush that out put this in ultrasonic cleaner and let me finish getting this uh, this muffler off well we can get to the valves there so maybe I won't need to take the, the muffler off we'll take the cover off there gaskets good yeah there's a bunch of crap in there I don't know if you could see that If you look down in the hole there, bunch of junk in there. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this cover off. gasket split. I was hoping it wouldn't do that. Alright, so that's what the valves look like in there. That spring is compressed. But look at all the junk inside there. So we got a lot of cleaning to do.
So I took another look at it, but you can see I was able to, it was just kind of sticking there, but you can see it is moving. There it goes back up. But there's nothing pushing it back down once you get going. There it goes. So it's definitely sticking up here. I gotta clean all this mess out of there. And uh well. Alright. So it looks like it's starting to be able to spin back and forth. I'll do this real lightly so I don't damage the the valve. It's starting to spin. And there it goes, it's starting to pop down and pop back up. There we go. There we go. Okay, so it's starting to free up a little bit, but I'm going to need to, I mean, it is so gunked up in there. I'm going to compress these springs and take these valves all the way off and give them a good cleaning. Well, I wanted to work on that engine. Ended up having to cover everything up. And you see it's actually snowing here in Austin, Texas. Kind of rare. But I managed to cover everything up before it happened. Yeah, it's a, it's a heavy, wet snow. So it's going to be a couple of days before I can uh, continue on with my project and get started with another one. All right, so the snow has melted, and uh, I'm ready to get started again. It looks like most of it's gone. There's still some snow here and there, little drifts. Uh, I'm just trying to get everything to dry up, and we'll get started on the engine again. All right, so you see the valve springs there, and here's my, my tool. All right, I hope the... The lighting is good enough. I know there's a, it's very bright behind this, this engine here. So hopefully you can see where I'm going. Uh, at first, I'm going to make sure. Yeah, see it spreads open, pretty nicely. So now I'm going to tighten it down a little bit, so it'll be snug. too much there we go yeah okay so now I want the top to go all the way up there as far as I can there we go and now I'll tighten it down Looks like it slid off of the top rung, but I think that's fine. I think it will. Uh, I think it'll go up. There we go. And now I'm pulling the valve out, and there we go. See, ideally, I would want this up over this total top edge, but uh, but it slipped off. So I probably could have tightened it down a bit. So you can see the slot where the valve goes in this way. 
and then snaps into place. You pull it back to the center and then that keeps it from from slipping through. Alright, so here are the valves. You can see they're pretty gummed up there. At least this one was moving, but you can see all the deposits up here on the head and the shoulder there. This one was just frozen. So I'm gonna clean these off and then I'll look down in here. Yeah, these needs to be these need to be lapped for sure. And I think I'm gonna start uh, just with some sandpaper. Pretty caked up on the on the head there. And I'll do the same thing on the shaft here. And it's a pretty fine grit. I'm not gonna try to Alright, the valves look pretty clean. So I think I'm going to uh lap them now this stuff sprayed all over the place I'm going to put some lapping compound on it and uh, cycle it a few times and you can check it up here too you can see everything's moving the way it should all right and there's the tank we'll put the seat the carburetor back on it and you can see while uh, while I was cooped up in the snow, I went ahead and repainted the gas tank and uh, treated it for rust, all that good stuff. saw that. <laughs> so I'm going to put this long one in first because I know we, I still have to put this linkage on and I haven't even cleaned that off yet so All 
All right, so I'm going to clean some of this up. Then we'll go ahead and mount everything and mount it to the block, no problem. I'll just fast forward through all this. All right, so the gas tank and carburetor is back on. Just double check your linkage. There's the choke. See that's operating like it should. Here's uh, the stop and the throttle for the governor. Everything is working like it should. And I'll see once I get it started. Um, they had this tab here bent way back over. Uh, and that will control the RPMs once we get it once we get it running. We'll see if it runs high or low and we can adjust it from there. Alright, here's the gasket. Let's make sure it's gonna fit like it should. Okay, looks perfect. So luckily I was able to get these parts in while it was snowing heavily out here. Let's see, so how did that go? I think this one went here, right? Yeah. So you can see I'm not uh, tightening them down too tight with this. I like to come out uh, manually <laughs> and you can feel it and then torque it down because you know should do about 80%. And then you come down and torque them to the specified. Suckers down. this thing I'm gonna go ahead and check the oil oh wow looks kind of milky in there so yeah some water got in there probably down through the valves and through the carburetor just everything so let's go ahead and change the oil it looks like it's ready to go uh, I haven't put the the air cleaner tray on you can see it's sitting over here it's I forgot that thing was covered in rust too so it's it's sitting there soaking but by the time I get this mounted and get ready to, to crank it up uh, then we can put it on later no big deal so here's part of it it's almost done you can see I don't have the clutch assembly on yet or uh, the handlebar assembly. Uh, what I ran into, let me start with this. Nope. Now before, there we go. Well, maybe we can look at it this way. So when I first started, noticed, you know, this, this chain had, you know, skipped the sprocket and was all wedged down 
on this member here and you know when I took it apart I, I was thinking well it'll be simple just you know just put it back on adjust it tighten it up and it'll be done but I found out this nut here this bolt was stripped so that's why it would never stay tight you know apparently they'd try to tighten it up and uh, but it'd loosen up and then it would you know jump the sprocket so that was an easy fix just found another bolt put it on there uh, what else on here where this gear goes here's the gear and it was on there pretty tight you know you can see on the last video I had to use a, a puller um, and get that sucker off and I was kind of surprised because it you can see where the set screw goes in well there was no set screw on this one yes there is see it so I had to find a set screw and the other one this bolt was missing uh, and that was me uh, I don't know where it ran off to you can see the ground like this it could be laying right in front of me and I just can't see it but uh, so I went found the nut no problem yeah so it's just a 7 16th by 14 I guess but the set screw there it was a 7 16 by 20 so it was a fine thread and I just happened to be at Lowe's and this is the only 7 16 bolt I found but luckily it's a 7 16 by 20 so I'm just going to take the bolt cut it down to size about a half inch and uh, and then cut a, a slot I'll put I'll cut a slot in it so I can tighten it up you can see these were you know an Allen and what else then the belt I went in and got one ordered but you can see it's split right there so that's it those are the only few snags I came up with so far That part's all ready to go. I did get the belt, so we can put that on when we put the engine on. All right, all right. It is put together. All the linkage is there. I thought I was gonna have to replace this wheel. For some reason, he had duct tape on it, wrapped it, but now it's just all the gooey stuff that's on there. I didn't see any splits, no breaks, no nothing like that. I don't know why they put duct tape on it, wrapped it with it, you know? So, I put a different plug on it. It's not the, not the original one. It's not new, but it's better than the other one, all right? There's the new belt. Uh, let's see, yeah. So there's the engage and disengage. That's working. This engages and disengages that rear wheel. That's working. Here's the throttle. I WD-40'd it. So now it's running smooth. What else? Uh, 
The only thing I don't have is the air cleaner on there. Like I said, I have that uh, the tray up for it, uh, getting treated for rust. So it looks like a yeah, looks like I'll have a few uh, touch-ups to do where I was nicking it while I was putting it together. But I guess the further away you get, the better it looks, right? <laughs> so the the blade I have not in you know adjusted this yet. And once I get adjusted so it'll be scraping that bottom blade, uh, then I'll take the reel and and I have the the lapping compound that I used on on the valves. I think I'll try that down here. Alright, I haven't put any gas in the tank yet. I think I'm going to spray some two cycle oil down in here. So I'll put some gas in the tank and see if it'll run. All right, I put about a half a tank somewhere in there. Just put the choke on, throttles on. It's trying, but I think we're having carburetor problems. If I shoot it directly into the carburetor, it tries to crank. Um, well, crap, I guess I gotta take the carburetor back off and, and re clean it. We'll see what it does. All right, so this is interesting. I uh, took the carburetor off, cleaned it out. Uh, there was a jet that needed to be that little. Uh, needle valve got it going and it tried to crank again but then when I was trying to do the pull start it kind of jammed I was like what the hell so I took it off freewheeled this thing it was doing fine and then after who knows half a dozen up to ten pulls it jammed again so I had to take the cover off I'm looking at it I was like well I'm gonna take a look at the flywheel key I want to see what that looks like because this is doing some weird stuff Alright, I got it loosened up. And, well, there's the key right there. And it looks okay. Well, it's behaving strange because it jammed right in here somewhere 
and then when I just worked it free it poof I, okay started spinning again and now it's just barely enough compression there might be a lot more wrong with this than, uh, than I thought all right so the flywheel is good and uh, I put the cover back on gave it a few pulls and there it is so it freezes on me there now I can turn it back the other way and then it frees up right so now when I turn it back this way it'll probably uh, nope there it is see it's really tough And there it goes. So I had to jiggle it around. And there for a while it does fine. So. Yeah, so ain't that a bitch. I'm gonna have to think on this one. Uh, jamming like that. I'm gonna have to crack the engine open. And I hope, I don't know, what do you think? I, I think it's a camshaft problem. Um, one of the lobes might be uh, worn down, flattened or whatever, and that's where it's sticking every once in a while, and then when I jiggle it through three, you know, who knows? I'm, I'm just kind of brainstorming here. Yeah, let me know what you think. I think it's a camshaft problem. Uh, everything else is sounding good. Well, that's too bad. It, it's going to take a lot more work than I was expecting, but, uh, but hey, it's looking good, right? <laughs> well, Sorry to say, but there's going to be a part three. So, part three, I'm going to take the engine off, crack it open, and see what's going on inside, and see if we can figure it out. Well, like I said, at least it's it's looking good, so we just got to get it running. But oh well. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for the next video. We'll get this sucker running one of these days. Bring it here. All right, one more. Ready? Good girlie.